I uh, hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk some more liposuction, fat transfer, how to get rid of these big hanging bellies. Um, we're solving problems for you, uh, probably more problems than you even think. Many people think that liposuction is simply a cosmetic type procedure. And yes, we do cosmetically change people's lives and we make them you know, significantly smaller. However, however, it's not just cosmetic. There's many benefits to being smaller. Uh, when you remove the fat, the fat has been restricting you in many ways throughout your life. Uh, whether that's mobility, flexibility, um, you know, your health, there's restrictions all over the place. And I, I kind of get a, like a laugh, a good laugh when, when I have someone that, you know, some larger individual who's, you know, you know, good you know, hundred pounds overweight and they say, oh, I have no restrictions. I can do anything that I want. And it's, it's like that, that person who believes that they've been living in this illusion that, that they believe is real. When, and, and so when you see that kind of stuff, it makes you just realize, it makes me realize that people, uh, myself included, all of us, we're living in this little box that we think is real, that we think all the things around us are real, the struggles that we have, they're only our struggles, but we make it as if it's the whole world struggles. So how does that play out into liposuction? Well, I just had this, this uh, person today I was talking to, and she was super excited, ready to change her life. And then we did her blood work and found out that she was an uncontrolled diabetic and she didn't even know any better. She had no idea. And how did we know that? Well, there's this lab called the hemoglobin A1C that measures the average of your blood sugars for the past two or three months. So it gives us an idea of how well your blood sugars have been controlled. Now, she didn't even know she was diabetic. No one, she hadn't been checked in, you know, however long. So she had no idea. Uh, then come to find out through her lab, it shows that her, she is diabetic and it has it's been, you know, out of control uh, for at least the past two or three months, significantly out of control, where it would have likely been causing effects on her body. Now, the, the thing with her that just blew me away is that when she perceived that she couldn't make this change with like immediately, like she couldn't get the procedure next week, uh, when she perceived that, you know, we told her it was going to take, you know, at least two months for her to get her blood sugars under control. That was that, that was enough of a bump in the road for her to be like, you know what? I can't see this happening. I think I just want to quit and cancel the whole thing. And I'm like, what? This is the, this is just a little bump in the road, right? So you're going to give up all your potential and, and, and not only was it the liposuction, but I could tell she was, she was ready to quit everything, like quit her lifestyle changes, not make any, any changes to improve the diabetes. She was just ready to quit because she perceived effort. Like it was going to take some effort and she's right. It will, but it's going to take effort to stay the same as well. She still has to eat. She still has to, you know, get up out of bed every day. She still has to, has to do things. And so there's inherent effort and difficulty in doing anything that we do. So the truth is, is that it's hard to stay the same and it's hard to change. However, in the change, you have control. When you stay the same, you, you like the illusion that things are staying the same, but the truth is nothing ever stays the same. It's always changing. Our health is always changing. Every day you're changing. Um, sometimes you get more sleep than, than one day and you'll be more tired than the next. Sometimes you're, you're more dehydrated than you were yesterday. Um, everything changes. It's constantly changing. So that's why every single day we have to keep improving. And how do you improve if you don't know where you stand? You can't improve any. You can't improve anything if you don't measure it. So how does that work? When we talk about, you know, let's take a simple thing like like how many steps you get per day, um, and this is just a basic measure of your activity level, how much you're moving around. So how many steps you take a day um, is something that you, all of us you're probably already tracking, it's on your phone. Um, if, you're, if you allow your phone to track you, it's tracking your steps and it's tracking the distance and that, that you're moving on a daily basis. So when you track those kind of things, 
you can see a baseline of how much you normally do. In fact, it's not it's not usually a baseline. It's like one day you do a lot, one day you do very, you know not as much, and then it's kind of it's up and down, right? It's a con it's constant change. But when you track it, then you can actually see what you're doing in reality, because a lot of times what we believe we're doing does not match the reality of what we're actually doing. We might believe that we're following a specific dietary structure. However, when you track it, you realize there was no following at all. You just made up the decisions as you went. So it's super important, super important when you are trying to transition your life and change into doing different habits, different patterns. It's so important that you track these things. And all you only you don't have to track these things forever, but you track it until you get a good understanding of what you're actually doing and what you actually need to do. So when we say walking, let's say your 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 um, expectations was you're going to walk ten thousand steps a day. A lot of people have that goal, right? Ten thousand steps a day, and when you track it, you realize you're only walking about four thousand or five thousand steps a day. So in seeing that that you're not actually meeting your goal ever that will lead you to make different decisions. It'll lead you to perhaps um, get up earlier and walk around the block. It'll lead you to perhaps park further away so you have to walk to where you're going. Um, walk up and down stairs at your, at your office instead of taking the elevator or the escalator. All these things are simple decisions that you can make based off of the data that you have. That's, why, that's the power of tracking. Because if you're, if just knowing the information is not good enough. Just knowing is not good enough. You have to know the information and then put that into action in your life and change things in your life. Interesting story I just had this weekend. I was talking to my mother-in-law and we were talking about water, you know, simple basic thing. And she's in her, I would say, early 80s. She's a little bit older, right? Um, and we discussed, um, you know, water and hydration and, and the importance and how it affects her whole body. And I explained all the things to her and, and she said, oh, wow, that's really important. I need to drink more water. And I said, and if you don't track it, you'll never know how you improve. And said, oh, no, no, I don't need to do that. No, I'll just, I'll just drink more water. And I said, well, you're just drinking more water already and you're dehydrated and you're, you're she's severely dehydrated and chronically dehydrated uh, because she lives out, out West here. She lives in the desert. She's up in the, uh, in a Utah area in a desert. And so she's, she's chronically dehydrated as are people here in Las Vegas. Uh, it's a desert. So it's, it's, it's naturally going to suck the water out of us. So if we're not constantly re replenishing the water, we are, most of us here in Vegas are chronically dehydrated because it's very difficult to keep up with as much water demand as we need here, uh, in Vegas. So functionality, it affects all of our bodies. When you're dehydrated, it affects all of our bodies. So the only way to know that you're getting enough is one to track, but that even that's not enough. So let's say you set a goal of drinking a certain amount of water and you get to that certain amount of water and you still feel thirsty afterwards. Okay. Then that's, that's an indication that you probably need more, but you don't know these things unless you track. And again, I, I, as I said, you don't have to track it forever. You track it for a period of time. So I don't track how much water I drink anymore. Not actively. I know I have a big jug and I'll show you this, this my jug. So this jug here has uh, 50 ounces, big, big jug, right? So 50 ounces. And I try to drink about two of those a day because I know that uh, for me, that's about what I need based off of my past where I, when I was very, very strict, I tracked everything um, and I, and I got a good idea. And not only that, I tracked it for an, a period of time uh, for about 60 to 90 days where in doing so, I created my habits. By doing it so many times, I created the habit. So now I just do it and I don't even think about it. And my body tells me when I'm more thirsty and I drink more water. So tracking is very, very important, basic things. Um, and it'll keep you on track to where you can make the, the changes that you wanna make. What's up, Kale? What's going on? Traffic, I never can quite figure out traffic. It rush hour in Las Vegas. <laughs> Sometimes it's like super easy to get through and other times you're just like, what in the hell is going on? So public service announcement. If you're from California, please don't move out here. Just come out and get liposuction. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. 
Isn't it just like wherever people are from, like these small towns, and they're like, don't move here. <laughs> we, we like it here. We don't move here. We like how convenient it is to get yeah. across, you know, Las Vegas in like 30, 40 minutes. So Stacy, Stacy uh, one of our long-term patients, uh, long-time patients, Stacy says, uh, change is not easy, but it's, it's worth it. And, you know, that's, that's really a mindset that you have to adopt. Because most people believe that change is so difficult that they don't actually do it. They don't take the necessary steps. So you have to adopt this idea that although change is not easy, it's worth it. And so that's where we talk about the, the value of you know, what, what drinking water means and, and why you're doing these things. Because it's, it's, it's easy for us to say that you should be doing these things. But if you don't understand why you're doing it, most people won't do it. Because it doesn't make sense to them. So you have to educate yourself to the point where you understand why you're doing what you're doing and it'll be a lot easier for you to do it on a, on a regular basis. This is uh, one of the follow-ups that we had just barely. Uh, she came into the office with one of her friends. This looks photoshopped. And I know what everyone's thinking. They're like, oh my gosh, you doctored the photo. But no, no, no. <laughs> we did not doctor the I photo. Know. It just, her results just came out this way. And it is nice and flat and super straight. And I think she's, how far was she out? She's like nine months? Was it that long? I think it was, I think she was at nine months. But like, look at the amount of fat that's gone and look how it completely changes the way that she, uh, you know, her profile. Okay, hey, so around. Kale, what happened to this empty sack of skin that these plastic surgeons keep talking about? Oh, awesome. Guess what? It didn't form. Huh. It didn't form. Look at that. And did we do a tummy nope. tuck on this lady? Nope, absolutely not. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is phenomenal what the skin will do, what your body can do if you just give it the, you know, the, the, the support. And, you know, and she was completely compliant with her post-op care, and she did really well. It's, it's really incredible of what's possible. And I love to show these pictures because it expands the mind to what is possible for you. Because you see how challenging this situation was. I mean... This lady looks like she's got like a duck bill on her belly uh, with, that, with that fold in the middle there. And the fold goes all the way around her entire waistline. Yet we were able to eliminate both the fold in the middle of her belly and the fold in the, in the lower belly. Oh, and guess what? She got these kind of results on the front of the abdomen and she's coming back to do the hips, the, the sides and the lower back. And she's gonna have a waistline, which is probably the first time she's had a waistline since she was like maybe in her adolescence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, when you carry that kind of weight, it's probably been with you for a while. Yeah. And you know the thing that, that I thought was interesting with her is while she was sitting down, I couldn't tell. Couldn't tell what? That she had changed. And the reason was is because the clothes she was wearing was still as if she was that bigger person. Super biggy, big, baggy, hoodie. Yeah. You know, those kind of covering everything up. Um, but when you engaged her in discourse and you talked to her about how everything was going, man, her face just like lit up yeah. and you knew that something was different. So that was kind of cool. Let's see, Marita, um, I don't know if that's, Marita, 93. Hmm. Uh, can I have a lipo 360 without having a tummy tuck for loose skin? Well, I think we just answered your question. And if you watch long enough, Marita, um, you'll see there's many, many more people. None of these are tummy tucks. We don't do tummy tucks. Um, and, and you don't need a tummy tuck. It's, it's a, you know, it's a myth that you're going to get this empty sack of skin because clearly this individual, if that ever happened, she would have a loose hanging sack of skin right now because we didn't cut it away. But instead you can see her belly button for the first time ever, probably. <laughs> yep. That's exciting. Listen, and if you don't believe us just from these pictures, jump on the, the, the support group on the, our Facebook support group. You yep. can reach out to these people directly and I guarantee they will be more than happy to share their story. Absolutely. And, you know, Stacy was uh, making comments on Facebook. She's here today. She's a previous patient of ours. She's had quite a few procedures. This is her picture here. Um, and she is active on our um, private Facebook group. So if you haven't joined a private Facebook group, you should join the private Facebook group. You go to My Shape Lipo uh, support group on Facebook and you can connect directly with these individuals. Okay, Alma. Oh, there she is. That a girl, yes. Alma. Oh, is that, is that her? So that's Alma. Nice. <laughs> I see my belly button. Mm -hmm. It's the little things, right? I mean, when people tell me I can, I can wipe my butt, I can reach around the backside of myself to wipe my butt, 
I mean, that is nothing you will ever hear in a liposuction ad. <laughs> like, you'll be able to wipe your butt again. Or how about this? You'll be able to see your private pipe again. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever talks about those things. Nobody. Until you get it. Then it's like a big deal. Then you realize. I know. Alma, it's crazy. I came outside. When you shut up in the office, I actually went and looked for your photos and I showed you this one. But the side by side comparison is just unreal. Super unreal. So. Stacy's asking how we're doing. Life is great, Stacy. You keep getting better. Re Rebecca's here as well. Rebecca's in the house. Uh, so Rebecca, as well as Stacy, one of our, you know, some of our most active uh, followers, they are here in the live right now, ready to answer questions. Well, Stacy's driving, but, um, you know, we got people here that are previous patients, and I like this because it gives you the ability to, these people are like your friends and family, and you now have friends and family who have had the procedure from My Shape Lipo, so you can connect directly with them, ask whatever questions you might have, and they will help you out and, and guide you in the right direction. Alma, would you do us a big favor and jump on the, uh, the support group and, and give us an update on how everything's going and what some of the things that's changed in your life? you know, as a result of, of doing the procedure. If you wouldn't mind, that'd be awesome. Uh, so Kayla Moore says, I've seen how other doctors will give you a sedative the day before, the day before? Wow. And, and during the procedure, um, do you guys do that? I have super anxiety and that's been what's holding me back from making the appointment. Uh, we have anxiety medication, but you know, the anxiety medication just makes you drowsy. I mean, if you have anxiety, they probably gave you these drugs too. Um, they just make you drowsy. Uh, a lot of the people experience lightheadedness. They don't stop any of pain or discomfort. It just makes you drowsy. Um, and if that's what you want, that's what we can do. We have that available. Kayla, but listen, we have interacted with hundreds and thousands of different people, different personalities, and I promise um, we have gotten everybody through this procedure, so. You know, just rest assured that we are going to take care of you and you're going to have a good encounter, a good, good experience, I should say. Yeah, I, I think, you know, a big part of the reason why people have that anxiety and fear is it, it's, it's a lack of knowledge, lack of information. And so that's why we try to provide as much information as possible. You know, Kale and I are here live here to answer your questions. And not only that, we connect you with individuals who have had the procedure so you can ask the questions that, you know, an actual person, a patient can can only answer because they've been through the experience. You know, with that said, Kale and I have both had the procedure ourselves, um, so we can speak from personal experience. But it's definitely uh, it's it's eye opening when you are able to speak with the you know your peer people uh, you know are just like you that can give you you know guided information to point point you in the right direction. Super direct. Thank you. Wow, look at that. That's pretty amazing too. Yeah, and you know, some of these procedures, it's like people talk about, you know, and they say to me, oh, you know, you guys only do the front of the abdomen, you know, on some, on some of the larger patients, and, and only the front of the abdomen is, is what this looks like, which is huge dramatic change. It makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, just a simple uh, proportion change where the belly is not sticking out as far as the breast, that makes a huge difference, yep. right? It almost It almost looks like like in the uh, before picture, her back is arched more, but I think that's an illusion because the front of the belly is sticking out more. What do you think? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, uh, it's kind of yeah. it's it's kind of curious, right? Especially on larger individuals, you, it's, it seems as they're they're standing up straighter when you take the front of the belly away. Yeah, they have that extra excess, you know, pushing them forward. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is, right? There we go. It's another one. Yeah. I mean, look at the look at the width difference in the before and after. They're basically taken from the same you know distance away. You can tell that the proportions are correct. Um, you know, as far as the legs go, maybe this one was a little bit closer. But like, look at look at how overall mm -hmm. this crease right here, this bra roll crease. Look how it's gone down significantly because we just treated the front of the abdomen. Right. Why do you think that is? 
Why don't you eliminate the, the fat has a place to go, the rest of it, the surrounding. Right. It's not just, uh, you know, your body will just pack it on and pack it on and pack it on and then it will stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. When you get rid of it um, in certain areas, it will, it's free, right. free to just hang. <clears throat> it's almost like, I mean, physics definitely plays a role in all this stuff. So when, what I mean by physics is when the, the fat itself is pulling down gravity pulls down that leads to some type of folds it leads to a lot of weird stuff and as we get as we see larger individuals you can see how the fat the body just starts to accommodate the fat that you put on and this is one here that's just you know it's it's different um, and you see these in this is the backside but yet you can see as the back is getting so full it's starting to fold over just as if the front of the belly does and you got to start wondering why that stuff happens. And, that, and when you start seeing this over and over and over, you start to realize that this is the function of the if gravity's pulling on in this fullness. The more fullness you put back there, gravity is going to continue to do its thing. And the cool thing is, is we're able to change that simply by changing the amount of fat. Yeah, and this one, this one kind of highlights, oh, sorry, that back roll. That kind of like highlights a lot of how we practice too because this is not like the traditional liposuction patient. It really isn't. And, you know, oftentimes when they have these meals or they have these, these practices where they're trying to push people through, they want certain body types. They want them to be like this category and they don't want to have to think and they don't want to have to like get creative on how they're going to get treated or how they're going to treat the patient, I should say. So this was just, this was just a cool patient. It was a cool case because of where she carried it and how we went about it. And man, her results look amazing because of that. Right. And we're always kind of like, you know, looking out of the box, trying to say, hey, how can we improve? How can we, you know, improve our process? How can we make these patients look better? Um, so it's kind of cool. So these kind of results are, you don't have to be this big, obviously, to get liposuction from us. <laughs> you know, we do, we do this for smaller people as well. I, I like showing these pictures of these larger individuals because visually it's a bigger, more dramatic change. And it kind of gives you just a, a general idea of what is possible with liposuction. So clearly, if we can make it this big of a change on a larger person, do you think that we can make a change on a smaller person? Absolutely. And if we can create these type of, of uh, curves on a larger person, yeah, it's like a slam dunk easy on a smaller person. These are the challenging things that we work on. And we show this because we want you to see what is possible for you because many individuals this large believe that there's no hope for them. They've been turned down by other practitioners and you know, or they believe that they have to get some big surgery, a tummy tuck. Well, you don't have to. Stacy says, fear will stop you from reaching your goal and you have, you have to concern your fear in order to unlock the potential. Yeah, I think you mean uh, you have to address or or what's the word? Uh, confront, mm -hmm. confront the fear. Yeah. Stare down. Yeah. In most cases, like the thing that you don't want to do the most is is usually the thing that you have to do in order to get past whatever struggle you have. You know, whatever that means. You know, so let me say it again. So whatever you whatever you don't want to do is usually the thing that you should be going straight towards in order to solve your problem. So. Perception-wise in this picture, one would look at this picture and say, oh my gosh, she's still fat, right? I guess not that, she's still big, you know? But if you look and you compare the landmarks on her body, look how these two lines kind of overlap, that bra roll and that front belly roll. I mean, they're so profound in this top before picture. And then down here in this lower picture, look how they're just like, they're, they're, they're separated. And then you look at the, the volume of the front of the abdomen. Mm -hmm. Pretty incredible. I mean, we took out a substantial amount of fat from her. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of people that would say, no, no, no I don't, I don't want to work on people like that. Uh, that, that, that. That's way too. She's gonna have a bunch of ha uh, hanging skin. She's gonna need a tummy tuck. No, it's not the case. It's not the case. And she is probably only a couple of weeks post-op in this particular photo. So her results are gonna get a lot better over time. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely still swollen in this picture. So this is exciting. I, I can't wait to see this person after a year. And, and it'll be like 10 times better if she decides to come back and get the rest of the 360 um, taken care of. I mean, like, 
Can you imagine the full 360 on a person like this, how big and dramatic the, the final results are going to be? You know, like I said before, man, like giving waistlines to people that probably haven't had their waistline identifiable right. for, you know, years. Decades. Yeah, decades. Decades. Been sick for that long. They've just been, you know, neglecting themselves for that long. Okay, Leslie says, what's the max BMI you can have to get a BBL and lipo? Leslie, you know, the interesting thing is, is that larger individuals, they usually don't need to be transferred fat. It's more about carving out the shapes and taking away the fat. Uh, most larger individuals have fullness on the butt. However, there's quite a few of them that sit all the time. And when you sit all the time, it causes this flattening of the butt. Um, so sometimes that's the case, but the, it's a big part of the shaping of the butt comes with the liposuction part. And there's not necessarily a max BMI for doing, um, you know, a BBL. However, it's just we need to break it down into smaller procedures where we can maximize the amount of fat that we get out of, out of a given area. So, for example, this procedure here, this was not 360. This was the treatment of the front of the abdomen. So obviously we had a uh, uh, significant amount of fat to remove out of the front of the abdomen. So we were able to focus our efforts there and get a significantly more fat out of just that area to get the changes that we got. Now, Gail, what do you think would happen if we tried to do 360 on this lady? So we can take out as much fat as any respective body will allow us to take out, right? And when you try and take out too much in one setting, the body does not adjust well and it does not tolerate it very well. And so by doing that, it would be completely irresponsible, completely irresponsible. So by breaking this up into two procedures, uh oh, we got some screens coming up. Breaking this up into two procedures, it makes it safe. It makes it where you can actually, you know, get the results that you're looking for by, 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 by treating the different areas individually. Right. So one of the, like you mentioned, you know, can I get a BBL, right? What was that right. her last comment? Yeah. So that, I like to bring that up because that typically, with the larger volume patients, that's typically done on the second procedure, right? Because right? the first one we treat the front of the abdomen, and then when we treat the sides and lower back, that's when we can sculpt that buttocks right. and make it look amazing. Yeah. And if you, Leslie, if you go look at, um, go, go to our private Facebook group and connect with some of the people there, you can kind of see how they've gotten results. The interesting thing is you'll see that they, the girls will come up with this, this hashtag, the, um, what do they call it, booty pop doc or something like that. Um, because when we treat the lower back, it makes it appear that the butt pops out. Now, the reality is, is the butt is not changing in many cases, but it's rather we're taking away the fat in that lower back above the butt. And so when you make things smaller surrounding the butt, it makes the butt itself appear to pop out. And so that's how, that's, and that's the reason why larger individuals who already have a significant amount of fat on the butt typically don't need a fat transfer. And this is an example here, um, Heather, she did not have a fat transfer to her butt. It was only liposuction and she had multiple procedures. She had treatment of her front of her abdomen. She came back and did the waistline. And then she came back after that to do the arms and the, the, uh, the front back bra roll. And I think she did the chin as well. Um, but you can see how well the butt was shaped. And that was just from liposuction. Mm -hmm. So no additional fat put in there, but the butt's shaped differently. And you, clearly you can see it's defined in comparison to the, to the before. And you can take that bit of information that he just shared with you and, and pass that on to your significant other. Say, listen, you know, every guy talks about having larger anatomy downstairs. There's not really a good way of doing that, not even surgically. So the only way that they can really do it and get some great results is just lose weight in the fat around the area. So, oh, you're talking about guys? Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's tricky, right? So yeah. <laughs> so that particular thing applies yeah, to guys. Yeah, when you know when guys get that bulge in the pubic area, it's like um, it's like um, we'll say it's, it's turtles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or an guinea, um, right? Right. Like I've seen some pretty yeah. interesting body habituses. Uh, you know, when a guy has an any down there, it's really man, I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. You know, I had a guy that came to me a long time ago that got fat transfer onto his penis. And what it did was it made his, the shaft thicker and it engulfed the penis. Hmm. It was really bizarre. Now, what this guy did is he was a big, a big gentleman and he went and gained a bunch of weight after he had that done. Oh. So it further got bigger and it just, it was, yeah, it sucks. 
suck. So make everything smaller, uh, and the surrounding things smaller, and, and what you want to look better will, will look bigger. There you go. Three, work, three weeks post-op on this gentleman, significant amount of weight loss. Yeah. Significant. You know, it might not re be reflected in the scale, okay, because everybody's body is different and their fat consistencies are different. The density of the fat is different. But you can totally tell that he he's – He's ready to buy some new clothes. Look at how low that waist is hanging. These are sweatpants, and they're probably falling off of them. You know? so. Maria says she's about the size of that lady after her surgery. Okay. Maria, we can help you. Yep. Jump on the, the website, You know, get a quick quote, schedule an appointment, uh, a consultation so that we can talk to you and, about your goals, and let's get working on it. Lucy. See ya. We'll see you on Wednesday. Awesome. Oh. I love it when they jump on here and you know, and then they, then they start out active here, then they carry that over to the group and keep sharing their story. So it's it's, it's amazing. So I, I appreciate that, Lucia, and I hope hope we can see a, your whole journey. And Cat from My Shape and Susie are both here answering questions. Uh, they do speak Spanish as well. So if you have any Spanish questions. Okay, Sandra says, my waist sits high. Would lipo look awkward? Um, I don't know what your body, what you're referring to, but I Just mean. High waist, so we recreate waistlines and we lower yeah. waistlines. That's mm -hmm. that's really easy. And that's, that's actually the, the crux of what we're doing here. We're creating your waistline. We create those, those elongated curves on the side by removal of fat. Do you have a picture? Um, can we show something from the backside where we show those elongated curves, Granville? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So even though genetically you may not blessed with uh, that big long torso, we can actually create that illusion. Yeah. So you can see here. This is um, one of our celebrity girls, uh, Candy Love eighty nine. But you see how she's high waisted, and it's just that fullness in in the the hips area, as many people call it. Uh, and it created by the fullness in the, the, having the high waisted, it creates this square shape of the butt. So you can see in the after how we created the hourglass figures and elongated the curves and that changed her into an hourglass figure, which completely changed the shape of her butt, despite the fact that there was no fat transfer done. And so these are just the illusions. And you can see here, this is how that butt popped out. So we did not do a fat transfer here. This was just liposuction, but it gives the illusion that the butt pops out and has a much rounder look to it. And that's strictly liposuction. What's the time difference in this? Pre and post. I don't know. Because she still looks a little swollen down here in the lower side. Yeah, the, you can see what this, uh, that's looks like from the garment, right? I would say a couple months probably. So Sandra, we can fix the waist. Those are things that we, that's, that's the, that's, we're the solution for that. And you can see this another one here, how we took her out, out of the waistline and it lowers that waistline. Just a little bit makes a big difference. Okay, do you all do the fat transfer on the first procedure or the second? So typically, if you were listening earlier, um, if, you, if you're a larger body habitus, we work on the front of the abdomen the first time. Okay, at that point, if you want to do a fat transfer to your boobs, that'd be a good time to do it. Yeah. But if we're going to do a fat transfer to your butt, we're going to wait for the second one so that we can sculpt it while we're going in that particular area. So there's two parts to the fat transfer to the BBL. It's the, it's the removal and the carving out of the shapes that we want. So you can see how we carved out the shape of the waistline here and the shape of the upper portion of the butt. And then the second part is the addition of volume. So once we create the shape that we want, we add more volume to, to make the contrast bigger. bigger. Smaller waist, bigger butt. Just like the song. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aisha. Awesome. We'll see you tomorrow, Aisha. <laughs> she says I'll be there tomorrow. Oh, girl. And Ciara is sharing our link for the quick quote. So any of you who are interested in, you know, just getting pricing, basic information, we do our quick quote. And I'm going to pin that comment right now. So all you have to do is click on that link. And this is on Facebook. So you click on the, click on the link and it'll take you through our basic uh, functionality of the quick quote. So you can figure out some pricing. And then if you're serious, when you're ready to move forward and get the procedure done, then that's when you do the, the uh, paid consultation. You'll meet with Kayla and myself and we'll uh, 
determine a plan for you. So Sandra says she's tall as well. She's 5'7". Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, you probably could have a very long looking torso. Yes. Depending on what your body looks like. Absolutely. It's, it's even more interesting to me when people have shorter torsos, like when you're five foot and you know, you're heavy, you get really boxy. And so those people, we can create the illusion that it looks like you're taller, mm -hmm. which to me is pretty cool. Um, so on, on individuals who are taller, it further elongates those curves. In fact, my wife had this, she, she kind of had those fullness in the hip area, uh, in that high waisted. And so we took that away in her lower back and her waistline. And it, uh, now she's got these really elongated curves. So I enjoy it. And this is another, you know, picture of a smaller individual who has a boxy shape, but clearly she wasn't that big. It's just about carving out the shape that we want. Yep, right here you can see the rectangle look on this side and this before pic. And then you can see how this torso got elongated and mm -hmm. the curves start and it comes down and then she got a fat transfer to the butt, upside down heart. And it's everything that she wanted and I guarantee that um, she probably got a couple more kids running around the house. Right. Because her husband <laughs> likes it too. And it's crazy how this is just simple proportions. Go back one more time. Simple proportions that were changed here that... Um, just by making the waist smaller, it somehow makes the upper body look different and the lower body look different, despite not changing. Did, we, did you do fat transfer on this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so butt. this was a fat transfer to the butt. Um, so it, it was changed to some degree. However, the the perception is, is further enhanced just by uh, changing a few of the proportions, like by, by making the waistline a little bit smaller, it changes the proportions of everything. Y también necesitamos da, hablar en español. Bueno, nuestras mujeres en la oficina, uh, Catherine y Susie, hablan español y le pueden ayudar con todos los asuntos que tienes. Um, yo también hablo español, entonces si cualquier duda que tengas, bueno, que nos avises, ok. Podemos tratar a todos personas. We don't speak Chinese, Mandarin, I should say, or a lot of the other stuff, but, um, you know, we do we can we can get by for sure so mm -hmm. don't have any anxiety or, or or you know reservations about contacting us because we can you know basically this is how we communicate with with results right here right and we're going to make sure that you have a great experience all right maria i'm not sure what you're asking exactly here but it says okay so the first procedure won't be as painful to me coming home because i'll be able and then it cuts off so you know what procedure you and what sensation level you feel is different every time um, it's different with every individual there's some people that come from multiple procedures and one procedure is easy the other pre procedure is difficult um, one you know recovery might be a piece of cake and the other uh, recovery might be challenged um, so you just never know so the problem is when you make assumptions and you make assumptions that it's going to be bad and that fear is what scares you so try to try to think less about it um, and just, you know, have positive thoughts and, you know, we're going to do the best that we can for you. So, oh, wait, the Lux Harley, previous patient, she says, love how you get, uh -huh. how you give us the hourglass look back. Absolutely. She was yeah. one, she, like, I like to bring her up just because of her age. She was a little older, right? She was in the seventies and she just was not happy because she, back in her day when, 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 when she was probably in her twenties and thirties, she had a very shapely body and life happens and we just put on a little extra weight and she was just done carrying that extra weight and she wanted her figure back and she wanted her clothes to fit better. Yeah. And so she did it and she looked amazing afterwards. Yeah. That's a, it's, it's one of those things that once you finally decide that you've had enough of, of what you, whatever you're dealing with, when you're tired of dealing with it, it's time to change. And sometimes it takes you till you're 70, but it doesn't have to be that long. You can decide now, whatever age you are you can decide in your 20s that enough is enough and you're ready to change you decide in your 30s whatever the case whatever your struggles have been whenever you're ready and you're sick of dealing with it it's time to change absolutely well look at the size of that belly unreal Yeah, these are so cool. And you can see all these pictures are real people. You know, the, this is, she's taking a picture at a, what is this, hotel or, or house? Bedroom. Bedroom. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, and these are real people, real pictures, they're not photoshopped, uh, and, and these individuals are posting them on our private Facebook group so you can connect with them directly. Um, and you know, if you're ready, if you're ready or you're curious, you're just wondering, you're like, what, what does this sub cost? Go check out our quick quote system. It's on our website, myshapelapo.com, right on the front page there. Uh, you click on that and that'll allow you to, to, to determine pricing for yourself uh, without sending any information or any pictures. It's just, it's gonna be based off of your BMI. Uh, and then if you're serious, once you decide you're ready to move forward, then the next step is getting that paid consultation. Um, and then you'll meet with Kayla and myself for you know half hour, we'll look at your pictures, we'll determine a plan and get you started on the path to success. Okay, so Maggie Ruiz so says, so what's the difference from previous quote versus BMI quote? It's a different structure. Um, the pricing, uh, for the most part is is substantially cheaper with the new pricing. Um, I think it's more fair and it takes into account the volume that we're anticipating. Uh, so it allows us to estimate. And I think it's, it's, it's I think it keeps us a lot safer. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 It, it helps us to make better decisions. Um, and I think it's, it's better for the patient. Uh, and it, I think it, it, in general, it's, it's cheaper than our previous pricing, but it is different. But it's super easy to use. You know, the BMI is just just utilized to put you into a certain category um, where we've, we've we've kind of created these categories. I mean, Trevor did this this whole category thing. He's been thinking about it for years. Um, created these categories to where we anticipate it's going to be this amount of work. We anticipate that a smaller body habitus is going to be this amount of work, and so it, it, it's reflected in how much work we actually have to do. So um, it's not because we're trying to discriminate. It's just taking this stuff out is very, very labor intensive. And you will see us sweating the entire time. You will see us mm -hmm. really, really trying to get the best that we can and, and, and really work hard and get it done in a short amount of time so that you have a better recovery. So there's, there's methods to our madness and there's reason that we do it the way we do. And you know what, if you don't agree with it, there's a lot of people that do it, okay? You can go talk to a couple of different offices, but I'm telling you right now, you're gonna have a great experience when you come over to our place. Nancy RR from Instagram says, hi, is the blood work absolutely necessary? Well, Nancy, we have a couple cool stories to uh, explain why it is necessary. So first of all, it protects you. And so we recently just had a patient that found out that she was diabetic by our blood work. So that's the first thing, it protects you. Second thing is it protects us. So what happens if you have something that we don't know about, like HIV? Um, and people don't disclose that information. So when we do our testing, we need to find out this information because that's important to us. Uh, you know, if you have a disease like HIV, that's potentially uh, we can well you know, I mean, have issues, right? Yeah, if your if your immune system doesn't work because you're you know HIV positive and and, and you've never you nobody ever told you you had it, right? Okay, then you need to like seek out the proper treatment for that. A lot of the other stuff that we look for, we look for anemias, right? Where's your blood levels at? You know, do you have any problems with with what we perceive as going to be a coagulation issue where you might have to, where you might bleed out because you don't have enough platelets or you, um, you know, or 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 your numbers are off. Um, you know, now, it's not uncommon for anemia, right? And nope. What are the, what are the uh, more common reasons why women would have anemia? Well, some of them have heavy menstrual cycling. They call it dysfunctional uterine bleeding, okay? Amenorrhea. Um, so that causes a lot of excessive bleeding. Um, you can have iron deficiency or supplement, um, you know, the issues where you're just not getting in the stuff that your body needs as a building block to build those red blood cells. So probably the most common one is an iron deficiency anemia. Um, you know, we, we look at the kidney function. We, we make sure that your kidney fun kidneys are functioning appropriately. Um, what else do we look at? We and look many at of these issues are asymptomatic, right? Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. so most people would have no idea that they have a problem unless you do the labs, right? So, and, and here's an interesting thing. I know a lot of people, I, you know, that a lot of other medical providers that do this and they don't get labs on all of their patients. But the reason that we started to do it on every patient is because of how aggressive we get. They don't, met, they don't match our intensity as far as, you know, the amount of volume that your body can handle, okay? They just, like we give you amazing results 
because we really get aggressive. And so we wanna know that your body is gonna be able to tolerate it. And so that's why we started doing blood work. And you know, it only takes one mistake on our part by not getting blood work and one problem that, you know, we don't wanna make the same mistake again. And so as you, as you know, as we keep preaching that it's constant and never ending improvement for yourself. And, and we are, are um, the same way. You know, we're constantly trying to improve our situation, uh, constantly trying to improve our practice. So when we have issues, when we find issues with the patients and we get caught, then it's important that we change. And so we are open to change. And that's and this is just one of the changes, one of the advancements of the practice. And you know, I think it's definitely significantly safer for the patients, which is, that's, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. But man, these results are freaking amazing, right? It's, it's just unbelievable of what's possible. And so you, you're, this, you're this lady that's struggling and, and people are calling you pregnant, asking you when you're due and and then one day you just go get this procedure and all of a sudden you have this banging body. <laughs> I mean, like, unbelievable. This, I, I can't imagine how, how this would change a person's personality or their confidence level. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean think about all of the different clothes that she's now able to wear and not feel insecure in, right? right? Think about, you know, the, maybe, maybe if she's single, right? Think about the dating experiences that she's gonna have because her confidence is gonna be completely different. Um, yeah, it's gonna change every aspect, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know, you know, when I was at my heavy state, oftentimes I would, when I was in whatever environment, a um, couple of job interviews, yeah, that, I mean, it, it just kind of resonated in the back of my head. What are they, what are they thinking about? I mean, um, I'm not as, I'm not as, you know, trim as I used to be. Um, it was just an anxiety that was that was inducing stress amongst all of the other stress. And so, yeah, when you get healthy like this, man, your 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 confidence shoots up, and you're able to go in there with uh, with reckless abandon and really get it done. So, confidence, right? Confidence is an amazing thing. So. You know, I don't. You know, I don't know exactly how and why people decide to change the way that they think. Um, but I do know that when you do make the decision, uh, you know, confidence is one of those things that there's people that can uh, that get this procedure and they change their body and change, you know, the way that they look, but yet they hold on to their old mindsets. They hold on to the old way of thinking and they still see themselves as that bigger individual. And so they don't gain the benefits from the confidence. And that's a shame. Have you seen those people? Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's frustrating when they still see themselves as the big girl. And they tell they actually will say, I don't want to be skinny. Because they've identified just like that uh, Olympic swimmer. They've identified. <laughs> the one at Penn State? <laughs> yeah, that's another topic. But, you know, when you identify as a certain individual, when we change you physically, it's hard for you to grasp the new you. In fact, Corinne actually said this. When she looked at herself in the mirror, she, she was like, for a while, it was almost a, a slight depression in that it was like a different person. A slight depression? Oh, yeah, because it's, it's like you don't see yourself as that, that individual in the mirror because it's, you, you're so used to looking at yourself a certain way then all of a sudden it's different and you're not sure what to make of it. So I posted a photo on the Facebook group just a couple of days ago. I got a text message with a picture in it. Two of our previous clients were, you know, they, they hooked up, they're, they're both local, they hooked up, they, they, they sparked up a friendship and they went out to dinner together and they were just, you know, you could see the smiles on their faces and they were just super excited about being together and sharing whatever transformation process they, that they were going through. It was really, really super rewarding. And, you know, their newfound confidence just from getting the front of the abdomen done yeah. was just so significant, so. Yeah, that, now that's cool. You know, I, I've talked about this before that, um, you know, the lesson that you are the five closest people that you spend your time with. And so if you're spending your time with people that are dragging you down all the time, then it's going to make it very, very difficult for you to rise. It's going to make you difficult to, to change and advance because you've heard the saying, misery loves company. So if you spend your time with a bunch of miserable people, they're going to want you to be miserable just like them, <laughs> right? 
That's absolutely it's, true. It's funny, right? It's and we laugh true. about it, and you, but do you, you laugh because it's so true, right? No, no, and I, it, it resonates with me because, you know, I mean, I, I've got some family members, right? That I'm just, oh, those are the worst. That I, <laughs> I love them to death. Man, I love them. And I wish that every time I got around them that my interactions were positive, but they're not. And so now I've got to, I've, I've, I've been distancing myself from them, and I, and I miss them. I miss them as people, but, you know, when I'm around them, I'm... I'm I turn into, I get affected by their negativity, and I just, I, I don't like that. Yeah. So I try and stay away from them. Family is the hardest thing, right? Because you, you, we, we've been taught that family is everything, and but what about if, if the family is what's bringing you down? What if they're the ones that, that are making you, you know, so you can't rise? You know, what do you do? And you know, some people will will uh, rebel against this rule and say, oh no, I can't do this because my family. Well, here's the thing: just spend less time with those people. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. You know, so maybe it's just holidays. Maybe it's just just control your whatever. encounters. That's what you got to do. You maybe shorter time frames. You know, call and check in on them. Don't give them the opportunity to get negative. Um, yeah, that's what you got to do. And I need to do a better job of like, yeah. you know, organizing that and making sure that I control all of the variables. And then I think what you'll do is you'll find out when you start limiting your exposure to them, then it becomes really obvious how much of an effect it actually had on you. Oh. And then you start, you're like, well, I'm going to cut all this shit out because <laughs> <laughs> sure. it's made such a big difference. Sure. Let's see. Dan, Danella for hair says, I want, I want it done. Do you think I should do my arms first um, or the tummy? So my favorite, and again, this is all depends on what your body's perception is. Okay. But my favorite is whenever you work on the midsection, Dude, those results give you like the best bang for your buck as far as confidence goes. I think, I think. Now there are some ladies that said, yeah, I just, I've been wanting to treat my arms forever my entire life because I've never been able to fit into a, a, a shirt because you know they don't make the sleeves big enough. I get it, I get it. Everybody has their issues. But as a whole, man, the front of the abdomen is hard to beat. Like the amount of smiles and positivity that I've been exposed to from previous patients after they've done the front of the abdomen is just you know it's unparalleled. Yeah. So I would say front of the abdomen. Yeah, I, I agree, and a lot of this is the um, it's the proportions. When your proportions are off and your belly is bigger than the upper body and the lower body, it shouldn't be that way. And so you can see with this picture here, this is just changing the midsection. It changed the midsection, and it's like looks like a completely different person. So. That's, that's what's possible when you change your midsection is it changes the proportions and everything. And so in my opinion, I agree with Kale um, that we, we address the midsection first. Um, but with that said, this is a journey. And if you have multiple problems, we have patients that come back for three, four or five procedures treating other parts of their body and they end up getting full body liposuction. So it's really just a question of what, where does this fall on your, on your, do you want to do your arms first and then a month, a month later come back and do your abdomen? Then, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're going to do everything anyways. And that right there is just knowing that we have multiple patients that have come back for their third, fourth, fifth procedure. That should mm -hmm. give you a little bit of, uh, you know, rest and relief, you know, and, and, and decrease the amount of anxiety. I mean, if people are able to go through this procedure the first time and they come back and they want other areas treated. Right. You there's know, a reason for that. There's a reason. Okay. See, Kayla Moore from Facebook says, I've always wanted to remove my belly fat. I was told it's the most dangerous fat, and my grandma had fatty liver syndrome and died from it. She had fatty liver disease? Yeah. Huh. So, you know, I think the abdominal fat that you're talking about um, that's the worst is that's more of the visceral fat. And the visceral fat is the fat behind the muscles surrounding your organs. Everybody has it. As you get bigger, it gets to be more of a problem. Um, but any of the fat that you have and removing it will help improve your health because the fat itself releases hormones, um, chemicals that lead you to be hungry. Uh, the fat itself requires calories and blood supply and oxygen. So you need you know, more blood vessels, which leads to higher blood pressure. Um, there's, there's many things that people don't really think about and nobody really explains this stuff to, to you know, most people, but the fat itself is causing much of your problems. And if you remove it, you'll start to realize what the problems were that it was causing. And your body will just get into a healthier state and you'll live longer and you'll have more meaningful 
you know, purpose in your life because mm -hmm. you won't be so restricted by your beliefs that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm insecure about how I look. I'm never going to leave my house. So it's, um, it's one of those things that when you get treatment and you're going through that, that healing process, you know, your perspective on your body starts to change. And then when it finally hits that point where it's not going to change anymore, um, you're just, the confidence has opened up so many more doors and you're just ready to roll and do a lot of cool stuff. Gloria Gordona says, I carry all my weight in mid my midsection, legs and arms are skinny. They have a medical term for, for that. They call that truncal obesity. Your trunk is where you carry your obesity. Um, you may have heard like apple shape. Um, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, and that's something that's, again, it's just that these are the proportions that we're able to improve. And when you, when you change those basic proportions, it changes everything about how people perceive you. Carol says, this is awesome for the, for the ladies that have excess fat and can get rid of it quickly. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I mean, so listen, uh, we, we've had many, many clients come through, many patients come through and everybody has a different reason, but I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that you can come up with a dozen or so experiences that you've worked on people that said, Hey, I'm going to get married in like three months. Mm -hmm. Can you work on me? Those are, those are super yeah. fun. They really are because they're committed to changing it very, very quickly. Um, you know, we get down and dirty and we do, we do the hard part of removing the fat and then, you know, they get to go reap the benefits. And so, yeah, so yep. there's a lot of people that have different motivations for doing it, but yeah. I had, when I first started doing this, I had this girl, a uh, young girl, and we treated her waist, gave her an hourglass figure, and then she was going to see her boyfriend who was uh, overseas for military, mm. and she came back pregnant and engaged. Ooh. And she said it was my fault. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, funny stories lots of funny stories this is uh, this is so cool to see uh, I mean this this is just I think really you know the, this is this is really what shows the change that that's possible for individuals and this is the visual but you can just imagine what this what this lady is able to do when you don't have that big hanging belly in front of you anymore um, what's possible you know and here she states that the weight that she lost it's about what is that 20 pounds yeah a little bit less than 20 pounds mm -hmm. and that's pretty much all the fat that we took off her i would think um and she's probably still swollen retaining water mm -hmm. but and i bet she looks even better now yeah i mean if she's maintained her results yeah, yeah. so love and cali questions uh this picture is just removing the fat no tummy tuck Trevor, no. do we do tummy tucks We've never, I've never done a tummy tuck ever. Yeah, we don't do tummy tucks. Ever, this is just, ever. you know, removing fat and allowing your body to go ahead and 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 heal and letting that skin come back, and um, you know, go back to the state that it was before you got a little heavier. So. so we are here to enlighten those individuals who have been lied to and told that you're going to have this empty sack of skin. So this picture here is a progressive picture. You can see how it progressive. So on the upper, whatever it is for you guys, right-hand corner, um, you can see how large she was. And despite getting up all that fat after the procedure, you swell up. So you retain a bunch of fluid and you can see almost it looks as big she was as big as she was before the procedure, which you can imagine would be frustrating, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. People think that the fat came back, uh, but then to come, come to find out is that you know, three months down the road, when all that swelling goes away, that belly goes away with it. Because we take all the fat during the procedure and it's gone. And it's just a matter of time till all that swelling goes away and the belly goes away with it. And, and you mentioned something. I just want to highlight it again. This is a process, okay? Mm -hmm. You come in, you get treated. We Listen, we'll show you the fat that we take out and you'll be able to see it. We'll even take a picture of you on the table showing your body with all of the fat being removed, okay? When you go home, okay, the fat's not going to come back. Okay, that quick. What it is, it's that inflammatory state where, you know, you need proper compression. Okay, you need some lymphatic massages. And over time, your body's going to go ahead and get rid of that infl inflammatory process and, and 
those are going to be your results after a couple of months. But typically, the, the, the larger body habituses that we work on, they have the hardest time as far as healing and the longer the inflammatory process is, okay? But it's a process. The whole thing is a process, and I guarantee you're going to have amazing results. All right, so we're going to uh, wrap this up for the day. Uh, so I want to say thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope we, we brought you some valuable information. Now, once, we've, once you've learned what's possible for these individuals, you learned what's possible for you, I'm sure that you have friends and family uh, who are in the same boats as these individuals, and you may be in the same boat yourself. Uh, so now it's your opportunity to take this information and share it with your friends and family, uh, point them in our direction, because you know this changes people's lives, it changes families' lives, because most of these individuals, they have family members that have the same issues, and they, what do they do? They send their family to us, because we take care of them. So when you're ready, Get your uh, quick quote, you get your pricing, and uh, when you become serious and you're ready to move forward, the next step is getting your paid consultation. Uh, you can speak with Kayla and myself. We develop a plan with uh, some pictures and get you moving down the road. Uh, this helps you to, to get much further down your path much quicker. It's not gonna solve all your problems, but it's gonna make them a lot better. So when you're ready, we'll see you soon.